we heard Simon speaking about how when something happens to you, it will happen to you. You can try to run away from it. Whatever you try and do, you're not going to be able to run away from it. And he actually gives a story that is very similar on those lines. And I'd like to, to mention it for you today. It's a story about a man who was a very straight, righteous, upright man, honest man, always did the right thing, never lied, always wanted to be uh, an upstanding, upstanding, upright citizen. Fine. Problem was, he was not making any money. Parnassah was not coming easily. And his wife was, you know, racking her brains. What can she get her husband to do? Very bright man. Very, very intelligent man. Very smart, very sharp, but not making, not making any money. And he says, she says to him, you know, in this town, people are very much into uh, what magicians and soothsayers and people like that say. Why don't you pretend to be a magician or a fortune teller or something along those lines, you, you're so smart you'll be able to convince people very easily and uh, you know, you'll tell them you can tell the future. I don't know whether he's going to have one of those uh, little goldfish bowls up, upside down and say, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is how I'm going to see your future or whatever it was. But she says, I'm sure you will, with no effort, be able to convince the people and make a fortune and make a fortune. So, of course, you know, this man being very honest and upright, he said, no, I'm not going to do anything of the sort. But she wouldn't leave him alone. She says, you know, we have to provide for the family, we have to provide for the kids, we have to put bread on the table, so on and so forth. So, finally, you know, with your wife badgering you the whole time, finally, he acquiesced, he gave in. And he said, okay, he would do it. So, he advertised and put a sign outside. And people would come and he would give them advice. They would come to him and uh, he, they would say, I'm going on a business trip. Do you think I should? He said, yes or no, whatever it was. And it would work out right. And then they would say, I'm doing a business deal. And he'd say, tell me the deal. And they'd explain it to him. And he would say, yes, you should do it. No, you shouldn't do it. Or you should ask for a better price, whatever it was. And every time he gave them advice, his advice came out right. Now his reputation is growing and growing. He's on the news, he's on, in the papers, he's on television, he's everywhere. He's, this is a soothsayer who really knows his stuff. All the magic and everything of the world is really right behind him. Problem was, he became so famous, the king heard about him. And the king said, I want to talk to you. So he goes to the palace and the king says, I hear that whatever you say comes true. He says, uh, yes, your majesty. He says, well, I want you to be my magician and advisor. And he's going, oh no, oh no, I could be in so much trouble here. What if things don't work out for his majesty? So he panicked and he tried to get out of it. But if you're commanded by the king, what are you going to do? So, of course, he took the job. He shows up. Two, three days later, he's in the palace giving advice here, there, advising everybody what to do. The king is asking him, you know, when he wants to go to war with some country, should he go? Yes, no, whatever it is. Giving him advice left, side, left, right, and center. One day, while they're all sleeping, a band of robbers break in somehow. They go into the treasury and steal a large box full of the king's precious stones. So they find out about it. And in the morning, the king summons this magician. He says, I expect that you're going to tell me exactly who did it using your magical powers or we will kill you. He goes, oh no, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I mean, my, my good luck has run out. What am I going to do? How am I going to give him the names, addresses, you know, social security numbers of the, the people who stole his, uh, his jewels? How am I going to do this? So he's desperate. He didn't know what to do. He says, you know, I've, I've had good luck up to this point, but good, good luck doesn't go this far. So he tells the king, he needs a little time. He says, Your Majesty, I need 30 days. The king says, Done. He says, Also, I need 30 apples from your orchard because the apples are what I'm going to use to do the magic. The king said, Consider it done. Guards, bring, bring my magician 30 apples. And he tells the magician, You have 30 days off and please, within 30 days, 
I want you to come back and tell me the names of whoever did this uh, despicable deed. He goes home. He's crying to his wife. He told her everything that happened. He says, this is what happened to me. And uh, you know what I have left in the world? I'm going to tell you what I have left in the world. 30 days. That's it. And then I'm dead. How am I going to be able to do this for the king? He says, you know what I want you to do? Every night when the day's over and you bring me my dinner, I want you to then bring me one apple and I'm going to eat it. And then I'm going to count how many apples are left. And then I'll know how many more days I have left to live. So the first night, his wife is making his food. The robbers, living in a cave, a band of 30 robbers living in a cave, heard on the radio or in the news that the king has asked this amazing magician to find out the names of all the robbers. And they're worried because this guy has a great reputation. Everybody knows that he is always right. So they have a meeting, they get in the courtyard, and they say, we have to have an emergency meeting, guys. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And they agreed that one of them would go to his house because he was known to sit near the window and he would hide under the window and listen and see if he could hear anything that would give them a clue what was happening and what they should do. So one of them is chosen and he goes off to, he goes off to the, the magician's house and he hides under the window. At this point, the magician is finishing off the dinner that his wife made and she brings him the apple and he eats the apple and then he counts how many are left and he says loudly to his wife, you should know one came and 29 are left, meaning one day of his life has come and gone and there's 29 left. The thief hears, he says, oh my goodness, he knows there's 30 of us, I'm here, and there's 29 left. He goes running back to his friends, he says, the magician knows everything, he knows everything we've done, we better, we better, you know, come clean, it, it, the, the game is over. So they're all scared, and they said, we better have another emergency meeting, what should we do? They said, you know, we better go one more time. We got to be careful, because it, it could be that it was coincidence, we just got to confirm this, because we could be in a lot of trouble here. So what do they decide to do? They say, but this time I want two men to go. Why two men? Because two men can, can corroborate. One can confirm what the other one said. So two men go that next evening. The man finishes his meal. The wife brings him an apple. He eats the apple. After he eats the apple, he counts what's left. He says to his wife, now two of them have come and there are 28 left. And they go, oh no, this guy is unbelievable. What did we get ourselves into? And they go running back and they say, you know, it's absolutely correct that he knows everything that's going on. He said that the two have come and he's talking about us and there's 28 left. They know there's 28 of you sitting over here and, and you know, we're in a lot of trouble. So they, they had another emergency meeting and they said, okay, the three most senior members of this gang have to go and plead for their lives. So the next, next night, the three most senior members of the gang went up to his house. But they said, first, let's, let's, let's see if we hear something. He's finishing his dinner. They're hiding under the window. He eats an apple. He counts the apples that are left. He says, three have come, meaning three days of my life have come and gone. 27 are left. They go, that's it. We better go straight to his house. They go to his door and ring the front doorbell. He opens the door and he sees these criminal looking guys looking scared and shaking and worried and he figured out exactly what was going on. So he says, eh, before you speak, let me say something. So they look at him, you know, is he really such a magician? You know, he knows why they're there. He says, you know I'm a great magician. You know what he, the king is going to ask me. Whatever possessed you to go and do this uh, despicable deed and steal his, steal his jewels? Didn't you know I was going to find out? He says, uh, now I'm going to tell you something. I'm a nice guy. The king is going to kill you. But if you come clean and tell me exactly everything that transpired, every detail, I will see if I can help you. So they told him everything. They said they decided they were going to steal. All the, all the entrances to the palace were, were, were guarded. 
But there was one area where they figured they could dig under the orchard, and dig a tunnel which would go straight into the, uh, the treasury. And that's what they did. And they stole the box. And as they were running out, the guards heard them and came chasing after them. So they quickly dug a quick hole there where there was a hole and they put this box in the hole, covered it up and ran away. And they said, our intention is to go back a few days later when everything's calmed down, they're not looking for us and we'll go and collect the box. He says, okay, I'll make a deal with you. You tell me where the box is and I will tell the king to take the box, but I won't tell him who did it and you'll be off scot-free. So they said, thank you, thank you, thank you. And they tell them exactly where they hid the box. So now, the next day, the man goes to the palace. And the king is there with all his entourage. And he says to the king, your majesty, I, through my magic and my magical powers, I can tell you exactly where the box is, but I cannot tell you who was responsible. So he says, that's fine, just to get me my jewels back. That's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So he says, okay, come with me. So the king goes with his bodyguards, the entourage, they go with the magician, they go out to the field. He knows exactly where it is, but he puts on a bit of a show. He's a bit of a showman. I mean, you have to be in this business. So uh, he goes to uh, the first place. He says, I think it's here. They look, they dig, no. Goes to another place. I think it's here. No. He goes to the right spot. He says, oh, it's coming to me now. Yes, yes, yes. No, 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 no. It's here, right here, right here. Go check. They check. Sure enough, there it is. They find it. The king is delighted. They're making a big celebration. It's on all the news. This guy is a genius. He's a magician like we've never, ever seen. The king didn't care about the name of these people. And everything was wonderful. The celebration. This guy's greater than ever. And he says to himself, if this happens ever again, I'm dead. I have to get out of this business fast. So he's thinking about what he's going to do. How is he going to get out of this business? So he says, I have to do something that's going to upset the king so much that he'll throw me in jail for the rest of my life, but at least I'm not going to die. So the next day, the king goes to the royal bathhouse. There's all guards outside. Only the king is allowed in the bathhouse. Not like the communal ones they had in those days for the, you know, the, the average Joe. No, no, no. The king goes by himself. I mean, you know, the king goes there and has, has his bath and everything. Then he comes out. Nobody's allowed in when the king is there. But the magician comes along and the guards move out of the way. This is the king's famous magician. magician. If he's coming, there's got to be some reason. So the magician goes in, the king is taking his bath, he goes up there and smacks the king on the face and runs out. The king says, what, you dare? And he grabs his sword to, to chase after him and as he runs out of the bath, the ceiling collapses right on the bath. And he goes, wow, you saved my life. You saved my life. You knew that was going to happen. I said, God bless you for doing this, but tell me something, he says. Tell me something. Why did you do it this funny way? Why did you hit me? Why didn't you come and just say, Your Majesty, you know, you're, the ceiling's about to collapse. Please run away. He said, Your Majesty, my magical powers told me that if I would come and say to you, Your Majesty, the king is going to die if he stays there because the ceiling is going to collapse, you wouldn't come out right away. My magical powers told me you would start looking up and investigating to see if anything was about to collapse or not. It would be too late and you would die. So I had to find a way to get you out immediately. He says, you are the greatest, the greatest, the greatest. He says, Your Majesty, I'm so happy and grateful that I was able to save you. But my magical powers have told me that I'm no longer going to be able to do this anymore. He says, why? Apparently, he said, all my powers were in order to be able to save your highness from this terrible death. And now that I have done my job, my powers are going to disappear. Oh, the king says, oh, I'm so grateful to you. I'm so sorry about that. But whatever you say, I will do for you. He says, your majesty. All I want is to move back to my hometown and live quietly for the rest of my days over there. He says, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to make sure you have all the food and the money you need. And I'm going to make sure the guards that treat you, you know, he gets a special uh, security detail for the rest of his life. And that's what happened. And he moved with his wife and family back to his old town and everything was happy. 
Hachan Nisim Hayim tells us the story. Again, he has, his, he has his humor and everything else. He says, but we learn from this. When a, uh, a Kadosh Baruch Hu wants a person to succeed, even if he does, the guy does something to harm him, God will fix it. 